Hello, I'm ABX Slicker and welcome back to the video. Today we're going to talk about statistics and the law of averages and how a lot of people get both of these concepts incredibly wrong and how you can kind of use this to your advantage because the truth is, is that you should fear both vending machines and you should fear sharks and somehow that is going to link into Minecraft. Trust me when I say that and hopefully you do all enjoy this video where we talk about how you can better understand statistics and use them for your life in a little bit of a better way. So please do like this if you do like it because it helps out the channel a lot. Let's know you do like the Minecraft commentary style videos. It's something I'm doing a little bit new here and a like would let me know that you want see more stuff like this. But with that said, let's get straight into it and let's talk about a few statistics right off the bat. So if we talk about the average sword in Minecraft, it does 5.2 damage and the average mob in Minecraft probably will not kill you. The average block in Minecraft is air, but all three of those statistics really are quite misleading. I think we can all agree, right? Even though they're all true, the average mob in Minecraft is not out to kill you. The average mob is not hostile. Uh, even though the average sword does 5.2 damage and the average block is air, none of those statistics are useful to you in day-to-day -day life because the, you know, the sword that's actually going to kill you is going to do either four, it's going to do seven or five or six. It's not going to do 5.2. The average mob uh, either will kill you or it won't kill you. You know, knowing that the average one won't really is not going to help you. And knowing the average block is air is one of the most useless stats people can tell you in Minecraft because all of that information is just not very valuable by itself. So in a game like Minecraft, I feel like it's easy for everyone to look at all three of those statistics and say, yeah, they're all a bit ridiculous. Let's move on to the next stop. Okay, that's uh, easy as that. But the truth is, is in real life, statistics like that get people caught up all the time. And it's quite ridiculous because in some cases it leads to people, you know, trying to avoid danger by doing more dangerous things. In some cases, it leads to people avoiding places for literally no reason whatsoever besides a perceived fear. And although there's some value to that, let me talk about one of my favorite examples, which comes from something that I do a fair amount of, which is traveling. So you might be familiar with that fact, but just in case you're not, I go to a fair number of places. And one of the places a lot of people were scared of me going to was Chicago. And Chicago, by the way, uh, it's one of the like my favorite corners of the US. It's a really great place, but a lot of people are just definitely afraid of it. Even within America itself, people are just terrified of that place, they're like, that is where all the murders happen. And statistically, yes, all, uh, you know, the, the highest murder rate in the country, uh, I think if of a major metropolitan area, does come from Chicago. The gun rate death alone is insanely high. It's like free gun deaths. There's a whole website set up for it if you want to see all that sort of stuff. It's really morbid and it's the sort of thing that makes people go, ah, well, Chicago and the greater Chicago area, they are terrible places. I want to avoid that because I like being alive. And you know, you want to know a fun fact about me? I like being alive too, but I went there. Does that mean that I just have a death wish and you know, I, I'm, I'm okay of dying and I, you know, was going there as like a plea for help. No, that's not what that was about, all, uh, you know, to begin with, because the statistic of seeing three gun deaths a day sounds really scary, but the truth is, is even that is a really low murder rate per capita. Like when you look at the actual, you know, odds of something happening just on a pure average across the city, there's something like three million people. Again, it varies depending on which, uh, you know, SPT you use for the smaller area, the large area, the etc. Um, but there is only three deaths a day, which means there's roughly a one in a million chance. And although a one in a million chance of dying on any given day sounds pretty bad, I mean, if you're only there for like, you know, three or four days, I think that's what it was. It's like, well, that's actually not too bad. Even if you took that statistic at base value, it's still not too terrible. But the worst bit is the fact that if you actually dive into it, it really isn't the equivalent of three gun deaths a day in Chicago. So again, this is one of the most widely spread things that gives the Chicago the really unfair reputation because when you dive into, well, where those deaths come from? Because when you look at anything, rather than just turning it into numbers, which is something that is easy for humans to do, if you actually look into it, you're like, okay, so all of these murders happen in the south side of Chicago. So for instance, if you're not familiar with the Chicago Chicago area, or I think it's called the Cook County area, whatever you want to call it. But if you're not familiar with the city of Chicago, uh, there is the loop in the middle, which is uh, named uh, because there is a loop off their elevated metro. It's like a metro, but it goes above ground. Uh, that whole thing is, uh, you know, makes a loop. And then up north of that, you call it the north side, the south side, and then there's, of course, the west side. And things, you know, you can be like southwest, further southwest, etc., etc. But if you look at a map and you look for where all the gun deaths are, they all happen in the south part of Chicago. There are very specific areas where the vast majority of these deaths do occur. And then you when you look into like what's the cause of them uh, because again I mean gun deaths I mean even knowing that they're not in the part but the place you are still sounds pretty terrifying it's like oh so this is mostly gang on gang violence so when you look into both those facts combined you're like you know I'm not going to South Chicago I'm not in a gang and I'm mostly in this loop area this uh you know uh, area which has a significantly low murder rate like how many murders happen there not many at all and it's like oh actually so what you're saying here is it's just about as safe as any other city in fact it's safer than a lot of other cities urban cores because even if you look at any other city which has like a significantly low murder rate, if those murders happen in the tourist center or where, whatever you're doing in said city, the business center, just the, the center of a city in general, then you can be way more at risk in a city which is theoretically a whole bunch safer. So yeah, there you go, fun fact. I know there actually is like, it, it comes up all the time of like people being scared of going to Chicago, but uh, same thing there of just like, guess what? If it's actually fairly safe, as long as you don't get involved in gang violence, which I mean, if you are, then like you're statistically at a huge risk anyway. And as long as you don't go to the south-ish site. Again, there are a few other like somewhat risk 
touristy places, like along the west side, I think. But if you're in the center or you're like, uh, I think it's called near north or near south or near anything, um, then you're going to be entirely safe. And I think this uh, is a really good example of how, like, you know, if you look at any headline statistic, you can get really scared about anything, but you can dive into it and get less scared. But you can also do the reverse. You can look at any headline statistic, be like, okay, I shouldn't be scared about that. But then you can kind of dive into it and realize that it's actually a terrifying thing. Uh, the favorite example of the internet, uh, this comes up all the time, that did you know that vending machines are actually more deadly than sharks? The number of deaths per year from a shark is less than a single death a year. It's something like 0.6 deaths a year are attributed to a shark attack. Whereas the number of deaths from vending machines where people try to go into a vending machine to get a snack and somehow it falls on them, it can actually kill them. And it happens at a rate of something like two a year, which makes therefore vending machines four times scarier than sharks. When you next see a vending machine, you should be four times as scared as if you next see a shark. Except wait a minute, that's ridiculous. That's the statistic of like how many deaths were caused by this. And first of all, it's kind of tricky to track down the exact number of vending machine deaths because you can find very few actual cases of it. Like, uh, you know, there's one particular example where someone had a 900 kilogram machine drop on them because they were tipping it on themselves. It's really hard to find all of those specific examples, but let's just go with it. Let's say that vending machines do kill more people a year than sharks. But the truth is, is that still means you should be more scared of sharks than vending machines. And you might say, no, Toy Cat, a vending machine is four times more likely to kill me. I'm going to avoid those things like the plague and that's me sorted. But again, this really comes down to the fact that, well, I mean, the number of vending machines you're exposed to in your life, it's hugely higher. You're going to see vending machines probably every day if you live in a big city and if you live in a small town at least once a year. Whereas how many sharks do you see in your lifetime? Well, that's probably, uh, you know, like a, a limited event. Like most people never do see a shark. Uh, how many times are you in a situation where you're going to be attacked by a vending machine? I, you're tipping it on yourself. It's not very many and you shouldn't put yourself in that situation. But if you are attacked by a vending machine, then you have a higher chance of survival than a shark by a significant amount. Whereas if you are near a shark, you shouldn't think to yourself, ah, this is fine. I read that statistic about vending machines. And you know, if there was a vending machine in this water, I wouldn't be scared. So I'm not scared of that shark. No, you should still be scared of that shark. If you are swimming in shark infested waters, you should be a billion times more scared of the shark than of the vending machine. The truth is most people don't get it to get to swimming. Most people who go swimming don't go to shark infested waters. And most people going to shark infested waters don't do stupid stuff. But if you do all three of those things, which you would do if you were misled by the statistic, then you could still very much die because of it. If you look up shark attacks, which by the way, one of my favorite awful hobbies uh, is to look up shark attacks. They look horrendous and you know, watch some of those videos. Whereas vending machine deaths, less common. You can be less scared of vending machines than you are of sharks. Just because you read a statistic like this, it doesn't mean that therefore sharks are these really good guys. It means they don't kill many people, which is great, but it means that you should still very much fear a shark. And that's a, that's a good human instinct that we have built into us that we should definitely keep a, around in there. Like let's not replace sharks with vending machines. Vending machines, they're wonderful. They provide all the snacks and the goodness that can get you through the day. Cause think about how many lives vending machines must have saved. Like someone was probably, uh, you know, about to die from dehydration. Vending machine comes along and saves the day. Someone might have been starving to death. Vending machine comes along and saves the day. How many times does that happen with a shark? I bet not very many. So yeah, my point here is that vending machines, you can trust them more than you can trust sharks, even though the statistics are the opposite of that. And to kind of bring this back to where we were going before, um, I wanted to uh, mention another fun example of statistics and how people get them wrong. Because if you toss a coin a hundred times, I have a coin in front of me right here. It's a Danish coin, but you know, if I'm going to toss it, heads or tails, how, uh, and I do that a hundred times, what do you think the likely outcomes are going to be? You might be thinking to yourself, like, I mean, that's easy, right? It's going to be, uh, you know, like 50 heads and 50 tails uh, most of the time. But no, that happens only once every 12 and a half ish times. There's about an 8% chance of happening. There is 12 times more likely for any other outcome to happen because just because one head, you know, coin goes heads, it doesn't mean the next tail, you know, coin is more likely to go tails. Just because five coins in a row go heads, it doesn't mean you're going to have a tails coming up next, which is actually a big problem that people have in casinos where they're like, you know, I've been losing money for so long, I'm going to get it back just because of this simple thing. It's called gambler's fantasy for that very reason. Past actions are not a guarantee of future results. And again, a lot of people then say that and be like, well, everything's random. But no, past actions give you a good idea of future results, but you can't assume based on that. It's not like Minority Report style, which is a really old movie I probably shouldn't be referencing. Watch it sometime, by the way. It's a really fun movie about how they can predict where the crimes are going to happen before they happen. Like they get visions of them and then they arrest people before the crime, uh, you know, can take place. And it's like, uh, you know, is it illegal to think for crime? And in that case, it's like, well, I mean, if we know it's going to happen and we have proof it's going to happen, that's a thing. But just assuming that like, well, I mean, this person committed a murder, they're likely to commit another one, not quite the same thing. So just get that in your head. A lot of people get those things mixed up. Minority Report, probably not a cool thing. And there's a big ethical concern there, but there isn't an ethical concern in flipping a coin all of those times and realistically getting, uh, you know, like a weird mix of heads and tails that you wouldn't necessarily expect. It's the same thing with shuffling a deck of cards. Um, in my opinion, this is a weird statistic that breaks people. If you pick any order of uh, cards for a deck, so you're like, okay, Jack of Spades, King of Hearts, Seven of Hearts, Six 
six of diamonds, four, you know, if you pick that all the way in a row, and if you shuffle a deck randomly, your odds of getting that are, it's, you know, it's got the exact same odds of if you shuffle just, uh, you know, uh, the deck, and it somehow turns out perfectly, one, two, three, four, five, six, in a perfectly suited thing. The odds of any combination of cards are the same as getting the perfectly shuffled one, and for some reason that breaks people, because the significance of any event is not, you know, factored in to how, uh, you know, like the odds come out. That's why casinos are dangerous, that's why sharks will still attack you, even though they've only attacked half a person a year, and that's why vending machines are really your friends. And, uh, you know, it's kind of just bring this back to Minecraft for a bit, I wanted to mention something, uh, you know, kind of interesting, because there are some statistics uh, that might make you scared of something like, say, the Wither. So, the Wither uh, has been defeated by 0.24% of players in legitimate survival. So, uh, you have to be playing in survival from the entire time your game was started to the time it was finished, and then if you beat the Wither, and you do it in any legitimate difficulty, you, you, you will get the achievement, and only 0.24% of players have done that. That might make you think that the Wither is this impossible feat, only one in every 410-ish players managed to defeat the Wither. Wow, that's really impressive, right? Like, I'm one of only 1 in 410 people, but then if you look more into it, only, uh, you know, 0.29% of players ever even spawn the Wither, so out of players who spawn the Wither, only 20% can't finish the fight, which is still actually quite impressive that you're one of the 80% that did, and then if you look more into it than they even that, you're like, okay, so let's look at the number of players who have even opened their inventory in survival. So people who just play survival Minecraft on any real level, and uh, when you look at that number, it's like, oh, so it just seems that most players don't play any amount of survival Minecraft. It's the same thing as that, like, localized, uh, you know, deaths in uh, Chicago, for instance, where it's like, if you're, you know, a lot of people don't live there and therefore aren't affected by that statistic, making it higher in that proportion of people. And also, even though 54% of people have opened their inventory, meaning only, you know, 46 players, uh, percent of six, six percent of players have never played, uh, you know, any form of survival Minecraft, but even more impressively than that, only around 11% of players have managed to acquire diamonds at some point by using, you know, by actually mining. So only uh, roughly one in five people who plays any amount of survival Minecraft have gone diamonds, and then only, you know, like one in something like, you know, 50 of those people have defeated the Wither. So, you know, getting to the Wither, still a very impressive thing, but it's not a one in 400 type of thing. It's more of like a one in either 40 to 50 or one in like a 200 sort of thing. It's very hard to like measure statistics and measure how well you've done in relation to other people because of that. And you know, in case that's a too abstract a statistic, that doesn't make you feel better about yourself, which you should by the way, because yeah, you've defeated the Wither I assume if you've watched this video. But the key message there was really that you should dig more into statistics if you can. If there are deeper statistics, try and find those. They will likely be more relevant, even though larger sample sizes make, you know, more abstract piece of data more important. Like, oh, did you know the UK is one of the safest countries to drive a car in? It's like in the top five because, partially because we drive on the left and a few other reasons. Um, but then, you know, some places in the UK are going to be more dangerous. You can look into this endlessly of like deeper into something is going to give you more localized and more variable, but also more interesting statistics. But this means that uh, in real, your real life, you can just basically use this as like most fear is overstated. If everyone thinks there is a real risk of going somewhere, uh, for instance, North Korea, you shouldn't go to North Korea, but it's not that dangerous if you do go. Statistically, you probably won't die. All of the sorts of things where people are super scared of them uh, are sort of probably the things that you'll get away with. If you know the risks and you're willing to try and avoid the risks in different ways, then you can probably do quite well with them. And uh, kind of go in the reverse, most of the things that you should be scared of in your life are the things that you're doing every single day. So for instance, uh, you know, everyone is really scared about electric vehicles because uh, one of the first self-driving cars, it killed a person recently. There's been a death from a uh, you know, self-driving vehicle this year, therefore let's cancel them all, right? Except when you look at the number of deaths from like motor vehicles in a year, it's like horrifically depressing. It always comes up like, whenever I check the statistics, I'm like, let's make sure we got this right. And every time you find them, you're, it's it's horrifying just the pure number of road deaths. In China alone, there's uh, over a quarter million road fatalities a year. A quarter of a million, that's larger than a lot of countries. Uh, in the US, it's still 35,000, even though it's a relatively safe country. Uh, but my point being is there is a lot of, uh, you know, things that happen all the time, of like deaths and of uh, bad things. And this might sound like a depressing video. Be scared of everything that you're not scared of, and uh, don't worry about the things that you are scared of. But I think it really comes down to, uh, you know, there's a lot of risks that you can take in your life that are kind of acceptable risks to take. You know, in Minecraft, try eating some rotten flesh every now and then if it's your only food, because you probably won't get the hunger effect. In real life, if you, uh, you know, ask a cute girl out, or if you ask for a raise at work, you might think like, oh yeah, that's never gonna work. Like, what are the odds of that? Like, 1%? 
probably higher than that. And even though that means it probably won't work, you might not get more money, you might not achieve the thing, doesn't mean you shouldn't do it because most other people are so scared of doing that same thing that you can do quite well by, uh, I guess, abusing that risk and making it into something good for yourself. But anyway, that's uh, kind of where I wanted to end today's video. I just wanted to mention that uh, both in, I guess, in Minecraft, in real life, and in the world of travel, something I do quite enjoy personally, uh, you shouldn't be scared of things. I also wanted to mention just one more time, I, I really like Chicago because it's got a huge bean that I still don't understand, honestly. Like, why is there a huge bean here? Like, whenever people talk about Chicago, they're like, oh yeah, there's the bean. And like, you know, it's just like a big well-known thing. I don't understand it entirely. If you've been to the bean and you're excited about the bean and don't understand what it is, let me know in the comments down below. I don't want it to be ruined now. I want to keep it that way forever. Uh, but let me know if you don't understand the bean as well. And we'll get some statistics going about how many of you are just not familiar with that. What, it, what even is it? I don't know. Anyway, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Goodbye. Thank you.